In this video, I'm going to talk about hybridization. Hybridization and hybrids are things that we're pretty familiar with just from everyday language. We know that a hybrid is a product of, of two things, the offspring of two things. So for example, you are the hybrid of your mother and your father. Um, today, usually when somebody says hybrid, what comes to mind is a hybrid car, which is a combination or the, the result of combining electric car technology with traditional gas or diesel car technology. So again, the hybridization or a hybrid is something that is produced by combining two or more different things. In chemistry, hybridization takes place among atomic orbitals. So it is going to be the result of combining uh, or merging or blending atomic orbitals. Now, before we continue with this definition, so we've got, we've got more to go here, but before we continue with this definition, let's stop and talk about atomic orbitals because it has been a little bit of time since we've talked about atomic orbitals. The atomic orbitals are the S orbitals, which are spherical shaped, the P orbitals, which are kind of figure eight, or infinity symbol shaped, and then the d orbitals, which are shaped kind of like two p orbitals together, or maybe like a four-leaf clover, plus there's one d orbital that looks like a p orbital with a spare tire around the middle. So these are the atomic orbitals, and these, are, these orbitals are the pathways, the areas of space that the electrons occupy when an atom is all by itself. So when we have just a lone aluminum atom all by itself, not part of a molecule, or just a lone carbon atom all by itself. These are atomic orbitals. When the atoms come together and bond to form a molecule, their atomic orbitals get hybridized and blended together to make new orbitals. So let's continue with this definition. Hybridization is the combining of atomic orbitals to make new orbitals that are used for bonding. These new orbitals we call hybrid orbitals used for bonding. Hybridization, the, the way an atom hybridizes its atomic orbitals, is totally dictated by the molecule that it will ultimately form, specifically dictated by the number of areas of electrons around that particular atom. So let's focus on AlCl3, and specifically, let's just focus on the aluminum atom in this molecule. The aluminum atom in this molecule, in order to participate in bonding and become part of a molecule, we know that this aluminum atom has to hybridize or combine or blend its atomic orbitals. And because this aluminum atom is surrounded by three areas of electron density, we know that the hybridization that takes place is going to be such that it results in three total hybrid orbitals. So let's make a note of that underneath here. If we have for the aluminum for any atom in a molecule, but we're focusing just on aluminum, if there are three areas of electron density around that atom, we know that that atom has to have three hybrid orbitals. Let's just practice that same concept um, over here with CH4. And again, we're going to focus on just the carbon atom. Usually when we're talking about hybridization, we're only looking at the center atom. So for for here, for the carbon atom, when the carbon atom hybridizes, when we look at this, we can see that carbon has four areas of electron density around it, four areas of electrons, and that means that this carbon atom is going to have four hybrid orbitals that it uses for bonding. The number of hybrid orbitals, three in this case and four in this case, is what dictates how many atomic orbitals have to come together to hybridize. So a molecule that, or excuse me, an atom that has three total hybrid orbitals, when we have three total hybrid orbitals, we know that those three hybrid orbitals came from three atomic orbitals. I'm having a very hard time spelling. And um, this is also, this is continue, the trend continues. So if we had 
uh, if we have an atom that has four hybrid orbitals, we know that those four hybrids came from four atomic orbitals. So, so far this is pretty straightforward. If we want to predict the hybridization of an atom in a molecule, first thing that we do is count the areas of electron density around that atom. And then we know that the number of areas of electron density corresponds directly to the number of hybrid orbitals that it needs. And that corresponds directly to the number of atomic orbitals that it needs as well. There's going to be no exceptions to this at all. So the last piece of this is which orbitals are being combined to make these new hybrids. So we know that aluminum needs to combine three atomic orbitals to make three hybrids. Which three atomic orbitals does it combine? So um, what I'm going to do is just kind of make, make a note here. We know that in, N, in any given energy level, there is a maximum of 1s orbital, there's a maximum of three p orbitals. Remember, we have three different directions where those p orbitals could point. And then we also have a maximum of five total d orbitals. Now, not every single energy level has all of these orbitals, but this is just as many as it could possibly have. When an atom combines atomic orbitals to make hybrids, it starts at the S and it works its way over from left to right as I have written these orbitals here. So if an aluminum atom needs to have three areas of electron density and three hybrids that came from three atomic orbitals, it's just going to take the first three orbitals on this list, S and two Ps, and it's going to combine those together. So this is going to be a combination of a I don't want to write it like this. It's a combination of an s orbital and it's a combination of two p orbitals. What about for carbon? So this particular carbon, we know that it has four areas of electron density, which means it needs four hybrid orbitals, which came from four atomic orbitals. One, two, three, four. So this carbon atom is going to hybridize by blending one s orbital with three total p orbitals. Now the name that we give to these hybrid orbitals is based on the number and type of atomic orbitals that are combined. So when we are combining s and p orbitals in this way, the hybrids are called sp2 because they are made up of one s orbital and a total of two p orbitals. In this case, when we are combining one s orbital with three p orbitals, we call that new hybrid orbital an sp3 from the number of orbitals that are combined. And again, this is sp2 is the name of the hybrid. sp3 is the name of the hybrid orbital used for bonding. Let's keep practicing. So here for the water molecule, and again, like I said, we like to focus on the center atom. How many areas of electron density do we have around the oxygen? For the oxygen atom, we have four areas of electrons. Don't forget that lone pairs also count. So we have one, two, three, four areas of electrons, which means that we need four hybrid orbitals. And those four hybrid orbitals are going to come from the four atomic orbitals, sp3 in this case, sp3. Now, just to be clear, the oxygen in this particular molecule has a total of four sp3 orbitals. They just all have the same name. Um, just like over here in the carbon, there are a total of four sp3 orbitals, and the aluminum has a total of one, two, three sp2 orbitals. Here's one more example. We're going to, again, we'll focus on the center atom, the carbon atom. If we want to know what is the hybridization of this carbon atom, we're going to count how many areas of electron density it has. This particular carbon atom has three areas of electrons, the single bond, the other single bond, and the double bond. So that makes it a one, two, three areas of electrons, an sp2 hybrid. And again, it has a total of three sp2 hybrid orbitals.